Thank you for being here. I, I, I love that you're here. Welcome uh, to, back to the show. Do you, do you remember the first time we, we met? I do. Yeah. I remember. This is totally impromptu. Yes. Uh, we were in Mineta Tavern. That's correct. And you were sitting with your parents at a nearby table. Yeah. I was with my mom and my dad, and, and my mom goes, oh, my God, that's Clive Davis. <laughs> Play cool, man. We're in New York City, you know, we're at Mineta Tavern, a great restaurant. And she goes, I go, well, I got us to go over and say hi to him. It's Clive Davis. So, uh, and so I, I walked over to you, and you were with a group of people at your table. It was loud, uh, and the music was on, people were talking. And I go, uh, and I go, I go, hey, Clive, uh, nice to meet you. I'm Jimmy Fallon. And you go, and so I thought you wanted me to kiss you on the cheek because, <laughs> like, I thought this was like the Godfather, like, he kissed the ring. So I go, so I leaned in and I kissed you on the cheek. <laughs> and he go, he go, I'm Never sorry. He go, he go, I'm sorry, I can't hear. Who are you? What I can't. And I go, I'm so sorry. So I, and then I sat back in my table and we just made eye contact the whole night and I, because I was facing you. So thank you for putting up with me and coming back. I appreciate you being here. I love you. And I, I'm so happy I got to kiss you on the cheek and I'm sorry. Legend. Uh, can we talk about this, by the way? You just got honored by the National uh, Portrait Gallery. Look at this. That's David... Ha David Hockney. David Hockney did the portrait, yes. I mean, One of the biggest thrills of my life. I mean, I love David Hockney. How did you uh, end up working with, uh, with David Hockney? Well, when I got word that I was going to be inducted, which is a thrill unto itself, yeah. in the National Portrait Gallery, I know David for years. He's a friend. I've been to his studio. He comes to my Grammy party that I throw the night before the Grammy every of the year. year. And I just called him and I said, David, I'm getting one of the biggest lifetime achievements I could possibly get. I'm going to be inducted into the National Portrait Gallery. Would you do my portrait? I figured, you know, I got to take that shot. Wow. And he said, you know, I don't do portraits from photos. And I'm in Normandy, France. So I said, I'll be there. He said, you'll come for three, four days? I said, David, I'll come for three or four days. And I did. And he painted it. So you said, I mean, because he's the greatest. <laughs> and now you're, now you're in the gallery forever. Now I'm in the gallery. It was such a thrill. The induction took place a week ago with... Serena and Venus Williams and Ava DuVernay and oh it, Dr. Fauci. It was a wonderful, wonderful honor. Uh, you've, you've done so many cool things in your life. Uh, they, they call you the man with the golden ear. You worked with Springsteen, uh, Aretha Franklin, uh, obviously Whitney Houston, which we're going to get into uh, all of this. Uh, you're an executive producer uh, on the new film, I Want to Dance with Somebody. When, when you do this, uh, number one, is it hard to do when you think about... She's not with us anymore. Uh, and number two, uh, why is it important that you're involved with this? Well, there had been a documentary and there had been a television yeah. uh, movie. Both were wanting. Both did not capture her soul, her dignity. They didn't capture everything everybody wants to know about her. And most importantly, they didn't capture the music. They didn't capture those great songs. They didn't capture that voice that defined a generation that was indeed, she's the greatest contemporary. Absolutely. You, uh... And so this movie does all that authentically, honestly, and the music soars. Yeah, Stanley Tucci plays you. Uh, do you have any notes for Stanley? <laughs> You know, I was very impressed. Before we met, yeah. he had read my autobiography. He had seen my documentary on Netflix. And then we did two Zooms, and I flew up to Boston to meet him person to person. Yeah. Um, it's a funny experience, but when I saw the film, um, I went with it. Yeah. And I felt he is wonderful. Yeah, you go, that's me. And do you remember when you first went in? It was here in New York City where you... Uh, so Whitney and discover yes. Whitney. Where, do you remember wh where, where it was or what you were singing? I remember it vividly. Uh, it was at a club called Sweetwaters on the west side. Uh, she was background singing for her mother. She stepped to the microphone. She did two songs. 
One was home from the whiz. And then, startlingly to me, she did The Greatest Love of All. That, Jimmy, was a song I had personally commissioned eight years earlier for the movie on the life of Muhammad Ali, The Greatest. Yeah. And George Benson had recorded it. It was a top 10 R&B record. But coming to the microphone was this 19-year-old, stunningly beautiful singer. Yeah. And from the beginning of that song, she was finding more meaning in that song than even the composers, Michael Masser and Linda Creed, could have thought were in that song. She just had it, she just had it in her. I also heard, uh, and tell me if this is true, if it's not, I'll cut it out of the show, but uh, <laughs> I, on I Will Always Love You, the beginning, the acapella part, was your call. You said, I, lead this in, I think you should do that, and everyone said, no, don't, don't start acapella. All right, the facts are that uh, <laughs> Kevin Costner suggested it to Whitney, David Foster, and me. We all agreed that that would be a great song for that airplane scene. And David sent me the first, right after Whitney sang it, she, he sent me the rough mix, and it w did have the a cappella, and it was raw and it was haunting and so emotionally impactful. He said, look, don't get demoitis, they call it. I'm working on it, I'm gonna be adding instruments. So days passed, two weeks passed, Warner Brothers, the studio calling me, we've gotta come with a single, the movie is about to open. I called David, give me your last shot. And to me, it came off a little slick with the added instrumentation. So, when Warren is called, and I had to make that decision with the a cappella intro, with the raw instrumentation, that became the single. And so you released that, and it came out. And I don't, I don't think anyone's kind of, uh, anyone was ready for that. Because it just came, like, if it came on your radio, you're like, what is this? Because it was oh, just like, yeah. Believe me, I... David was appalled, but as soon as it came on the radio, he got more calls than he ever received in his life. The single is the best-selling single of all time to this day. Yeah, yeah that's how, uh, the secrets behind the song. I'm so happy you did that. I want to show everyone a clip. Here's a scene from I Want to Dance with Somebody. Take a look at this. Okay, just okay. I think I might have just heard the greatest voice of her generation. That's what I'm talking about. He did a good job. Yeah. That's Clive Davis, everybody. I want to dance with somebody's in theaters everywhere December 23rd. Hey, hey.